we ask to factor each expression completely. The first expression is 2n cubed plus 128. It's important to remember the first step in any factoring problem is to factor out the greatest common factor. Here the greatest common factor is two. If it's helpful, we can rewrite the expression as two times n cubed plus two times 64. This is optional, but it does allow us to actually see the greatest common factor of two, as well as the remaining factors from each term after we factor out two. So if we factor out two from the given expression, we're left with n cubed plus 64. Now looking at the binomial inside the parentheses, because we have n cubed here, we want to see if 64 is a perfect cube. If it is, we can factor further using the sum of cubes formula shown here below. 64 is equal to four times four times four, four cubed, and therefore 64 is a perfect cube. Let's rewrite 64 as four cubed to help us identify a and b in the factoring formula. So this expression is equivalent to two times n cubed plus four cubed. Now looking at the factoring formula for the sum of cubes here, notice how we have a cubed plus b cubed. So for our expression, a is equal to n and b is equal to four. So the sum of cubes will factor into a binomial factor and a trinomial factor. And we still have the factor of two, so we have two times a binomial factor times a trinomial factor. Where the binomial factor is a plus b, because a is n and b is four, our binomial factor is n plus four. And now for the trinomial factor, the first term is a squared. So if a is n, a squared is n squared. And then we have minus a times b. So if a is n and b is four, a times b is n times four, giving us four n. And then we have plus b squared. So if b is four, b squared is four squared, which equals 16. This is the correct factored form of the given expression. For the second example, we have x to the eighth minus 216 x to the fifth. Again, the first step is to factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is x to the fifth. If it's helpful, we can write x to the eighth as x to the fifth times x to the third minus 216 times x to the fifth. And now we can see the greatest common factor of x to the fifth as well as the remaining factors after we factor out x to the fifth from both terms. So if we factor out x to the fifth, we're left with x to the third minus 216. And again, because we have x to the third here, we now want to check to see if 216 is a perfect cube. And six to the third, or six times six times six is 216. So now we have a difference of cubes inside the parentheses, which we can now factor further using this formula here. Let's go ahead and write this as x to the fifth times the quantity x to the third minus six to the third. And now looking at the factoring formula below for the difference of cubes, Notice now a is equal to x and b is equal to six. We still have a factor of x to the fifth and then we'll have a binomial factor and a trinomial factor. Where the binomial factor is a minus b, if a is x and b is six, the binomial factor is x minus six. And now for the trinomial factor, the first term is a squared. If a is x, a squared is x squared. And then we have plus a times b. A times b is going to be x times six or six x. And then we have plus b squared. If b is six, b squared is six squared, which is 36. This is the correct factored form for the given expression. I hope you found this helpful.